Top of the morning to all you folks out there. We are at the beginning of another day here inside Aqualand building our reptile enclosure. And then we'll actually have a big fake tree, I think, right about there. What do you think, Benner? Right. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> How's my hair today? Everybody like that? Yep, that's end of the day hair for Chris. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, there's Nick. Now he's trying to show that he's working. That's perfect. Look how strong he is. 20 bucks to you guys out there that wants to bet me that Nick can't put that rock back in the same spot that he pulled it out of. We are putting concrete cloth in this particular part, and actually it'll be over all the blocks, but this part of the enclosure is particularly important because this is where Woody is gonna be. Uh, 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 uh. Woody is our mascot. He's a alligator snapper. Alligator snappers naturally, like other turtles, like to burrow in gravel and stuff. So by putting this concrete cloth down before the gravel, we'll actually be able to prevent Woody from getting access to the liner or possibly scratching it or nicking it anywhere or in any way. All right guys, so check it out. We got all the concrete cloth in this morning and we are just about to start wetting it down, but it totally changed the look of this thing. For the better, it's all gonna be covered up anyway. The last piece going in right there. So we're gonna wet it all down, let it cure. We'll be able to punch holes in this and actually push water up through there because we have a pipe that comes down from a pump that runs straight through here, discharges into all these aqua blocks. Once we discharge that water, it needs a place to come up. We'll punch a bunch of holes in here, kind of upflow from the bottom of that. Ooh, upflow and help keep a lot of that gravel clear. Pushing everything to the skimmer, which is gonna be right in there. Wetland that's just about wrapped up. We got a couple finishing touches to put on there to just determine our final water level. That'll all be covered in rock and skins. Woody's little area in here is completely covered with concrete cloth. We'll do the same thing, punch a bunch of holes in here, but he'll actually have gravel somewhere up into there so he can burrow into that thing. We'll have a passage for water on the sides of these aqua blocks here so that we'll have plenty of water being able to pass through both sides. There is gonna be a nice sheet of glass right here as a partition, and then we'll actually have a big fake tree, I think, right about there. What do you think, Benner? Right. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> and we'll be actually be able to cut holes in the bottom of that tree because it's fake and push water jets through there. So we'll have this nice swirling effect right here, pushing all that water back through these aqua blocks, keeping Woody's area clean. You're a good tree. I've been practicing my whole life right now. <laughs> So check out this tree. This thing is pretty killer. I think we're missing a few limbs up at the top there, but we can add those on. I think we got a few extras. This thing is a pretty nice looking piece of, uh, you made that last night in your paper mache class? Matt's paper mache makes trees apparently. So we just got to the point this morning where we have all of our concrete cloth in. Now that we have all the concrete cloth done, we get to do a little bit more of the fun stuff. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You can't even see them right there. Right? So that tree is gonna go somewhere right in here. You don't know where it's gonna go. You no just, idea. No idea where it's gonna go. Uh, we are going to have stacked slate covering all of that stuff. So you won't even know that there's concrete cloth underneath here by the time we're all said and done. It's, again, it's just cheap insurance for us. And as Nick was saying, the next step in the process is starting to work on the artistry, right? Some of these elements that are going to really frame out and set this enclosure off and give us building blocks for the rest of the project. Large elements like this fake tree, we've got a bunch of fake boulders that we're gonna start moving in and placing strategically. And then we will really figure out organic how this enclosure is going to come together. As Nick said, when we get to that point, we will start popping holes in this concrete cloth. Rather than percolate, it's actually gonna blast water up and give a much higher flow through a much smaller orifice in the bottom of the enclosure, pushing water up, pushing all that sediment into suspension so it'll get drawn into the skimmer, being pushed by circulation jets, the upflow, and the flow from the bog filter. I think we are ready, like you said, starting, we'll get this tree in, you actually were on point, the tree is gonna go exactly where you think you 
thought it was going to go. Oh, yeah. So Nick was right, per usual, and we're going to get rolling. Let go. Rocking and rolling. We got our second shipment of koi in straight from Japan. We have all the fake rocks in. However, because they are all fake, it makes them incredibly buoyant. What Nick and I are going to do this morning is reinforce this stuff with a little bit of rebar, as well as fill them with concrete and then put some concrete footings around the outside just to help weigh them down, tie them into other structures to make it so that they won't float up once we fill this thing up with water. So we're going to do that with the fake rocks as well as the big stump right behind me as well. As soon as we get that done, then we can start rocking and rolling with getting the walls up for the fake skin and really finish up the floor. Hopefully we can get this thing done in a relatively short amount of time, focus on plumbing, and then start working on the rest of the enclosure. We are at an incredible point, because I love to say the word incredible. We are making really, really good progress. We've got, oh, there's Nick. Now he's trying to show that he's working. That's perfect, see? Look how strong he is. 20 bucks to you guys out there that wants to bet me that Nick can't put that rock back in the same spot that he pulled it out of. This is a reason right here that we've been able to make such good progress. These are all actually fake rocks. We've got what would be the equivalent of probably eight to 10 tons already in this pond that we were able to place all within probably about an hour. We've notched some of these rocks around the enclosure itself, really cutting them to fit so that they look really, really nice. Also, piece of driftwood, this big stump and root flare we incorporated in, this is going to be a great area for the turtles to get underneath. Just to give you guys out there a frame of reference, water level is right about there. So this is going to be an excellent basking rock for them. And it'll give us a way to transition from below water, which is about eight to 10 inches below water where my hand is, up, slide into here, and have this be a nice little basking area back in here. So this will help us establish the elevation in here as well as retain everything back behind it that'll be above water. This is our skimmer area where the laser is. Back behind me, you can see we've got, again, these big rocks in really accentuating some of the peninsulas, giving the pond inside the enclosure some shape. This is where those fake rock skin walls will come in. We've got a fake tree here, as well as one right here. It's really, really coming together nicely. Again, making very quick work of rocking in the pond with the big stuff. You can see we vaulted some of the rocks using our aqua blocks, which is perfect. What do you think, Matt? It's incredible. What about you, Nick? It's good. No, it's incredible. And Matt? Muy bueno. Muy bueno. We're hungry. We're going to go grab some lunch. Okay. Make a sexy face for the camera, Matt. I, I don't have one. Sexy. No, come on. Show us your best sexy Blue face. Blue Just to give you guys an update, we are now in the detail portion of this project, all the stuff underwater. This is a very tedious point in time in the project. We are taking all of this slate material and breaking it into small pieces and creating this stacked slate look across the bottom in certain areas where we need to raise up an elevation. It is very artistic, but it's also very, very time consuming. You can see we're backfilling with gravel. We're using a ton of foam in here to foam all those pieces together, but it is allowing us Rather than using a bunch of rock and cobbles to build our walls, we're actually doing the slate work in through here. It'll give a nice little look, very, very custom work. Nick, myself, and Matt, who's just getting started on probably the hardest part of the enclosure, which is Woody's area, at least the most face feet that needs to get done. So we're gonna leave him with that. He might be done by, I don't know, May 1st. Matt, are you excited for your journey, your maiden voyage into rock stacking? I'm pumped. You look like I'm it. I'm ecstatic. 
you, I mean, you, it's incredible. You could tell. Basically incredible. Again, very, very time consuming. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but there's a lot of work that needs to go in and it's crunch time, so let's go. How's my hair today? Everybody like that? Yep, that's end of the day hair for Chris. You guys like it out there in YouTube world? Leave me a comment below telling me what I should do differently for my manicuring tips. I think that's a wrap for today. We made some pretty good progress in here. We have the bones of everything in the pond in and ready to rock and roll. Please give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Give us a comment if you have any questions or let us know how you feel. Please also subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and click that little bell so that you stay up to date on all of the fresh Team Aquascape content that is continuing to come out. Till next time, Peace!